Well, it may have felt like it started on Monday, but technically, free agency just now got underway here Wednesday afternoon. NFL free agency and the new league year. And eight of the top ten in Pete Prisco's list of the best free agents available have found teams. Some of them staying put, like Chris Jones. Some of them going to maybe, maybe switch some balance in divisions like Kirk Cousins to the NFC South and the Atlanta Falcons. Calvin Ridley, Kendall Fuller, the two in the top 10 who are still at this moment in time free agents. We are going to look at this from a team perspective, not so much as a player perspective. Pete Prisco is going to give a grade to all 32 teams. Wow. Teacher. What they have teacher, done teacher. free agents. We got the cattle prod out yeah. again, Pete. Yeah. Pete, grade him. Pete, grade him. Yeah. Pete, grade him. I'm good at that. You, you are very good at that. We're going to start in the NFC South with that team that was at the very top of that list we just saw. Kirk Cousins going to the Atlanta Falcons. What grade do you give them? I give them an A. And the reason I give them an A is because they got the best free agent in the entire draft class. I mean, the entire free agency class. You get a quarterback of that stature to come in and changes the dynamic of your team. I mean, Kirk Cousins is that guy. Now, having said that, he's got to learn how to win big games. But if he learns how to win big games, it's a great signing. Uh, they don't play a lot of big games. All they have to do, I think, is start winning that division. I think they're capable of it. And I think Ed Mooney is a nice little weapon for him. Darnell Mooney, the wide receiver. So I gave them an A. I thought they had an outstanding, uh, outstanding free agency just by landing Kirk Cousins. What do you think of the targets that he has now with Kyle Pitts still uh, looking to take that next step as the tight end they thought he could be? Well, you also have Drake London. You have B. John Robinson in the backfield. I mean, that's a good group of guys to have behind them. I, I think this is outstanding in terms of the weapons. The offensive line's good. They should score a lot of points. The question becomes, are they going to be that much better on defense? That's to be determined, but I like what they've done. That shifted the odds in the NFC South before that trade. I think most people would say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be the favorites because of what they did and they really hit the ground running in free agency by re-signing Baker Mayfield, re-signing Mike Evans, and using that tag on Winfield. So what grade would you give them? Yeah, I love what they, I give them an A as well. I think, you know, Jason Light went into this pretty hamstrung by the Tom Brady contract. They don't have a ton of cap room. They had to do some maneuvering. And yet you look at it, he gets Mike Evans back as number one wide receiver. He gets Baker Mayfield back and it was a team friendly contract, by the way. They did a nice job with that. Keeping Winfield, you get Levante David back, a veteran who they want in that building and in that locker room, and he's playing at a high level despite being there for a long time. So I think Jason Light's done a heck of a job. job. I give them an A. Who would you pick right now in that division? Tampa Bay. You'd still pick Tampa? I would, I would pick Tampa Bay. I okay. think they're the better team. All right, let's move on to some other teams in that NFC South division, teams that may not have fared as well in free agency. Two A's given out by Pete, but let's go to the New Orleans Saints, who haven't done anything on offense yet. Yeah, it's not been a good... Uh, free agency period for them in a long time because they've had so many cap issues and and you look at this team and and they've been up against it and they keep restructuring to try and get back underneath of it and they and they do but they don't they're they're not limited in what they can do I mean they restructured a bunch of contracts just to get under the number so there's not a lot of activity there um, but I think bringing back guys to that team like Ryan Ramchek is a guy that may, the right tackle might have been cut but they restructured his deal to keep him there. Honey Badger, they restructured his deal to keep him there. So I think that that gives you some positive news. The only guy they really brought in of note was Willie Gay, the linebacker uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a good player. So you look at their grade. I gave them uh, a, a C, not a lot of activity. C but minus, Pete. C minus, but not a lot of activity by keeping your guys there. I think that's important. Okay, the last team in that division is the team that finished in last place in that division, the team that I think many would pick to finish last place again because the Carolina Panthers traded away what most would believe to be their best player in Brian Burns, but a surprisingly decent grade here. Well, here's why. Okay, I didn't, the trade for Brian Burns, they supposedly could have gotten a lot more for him, but this is a different regime. They don't make the, this guy, Dan Morgan, didn't make those decisions. He is making these now. They didn't want to pay him. They traded him, get draft picks. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I understand it because the price is high. But what they did do, and they had to do something that was important, was build around that quarterback. The Bryce Young is small, so you better be good in the middle of the offensive line. They went out and spent a lot of money on Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis to be their guards. That's a, I mean, it's pricey to get them, but you have to be stout in there when you have a short quarterback. They don't have anybody who is shifty, who could make people, you know, when big play opportunities. 
Deontay Johnson trading for him, I think that gives him that chance to do that. So it was a good free agency uh, class in large part because they built around the quarterback. And if he doesn't make it, you have it, right now on the surface, it looks like a major fail. So you better do everything you can to try and get that thing right. So I think they were okay. I gave him a B in terms of what they did for the quarterback. I don't like to trade Brian Burns. Okay, so three of the four grades are good from Pete Prisco in the NFC South. Maybe the Panthers gaining ground on the New Orleans Saints who get a C minus. Let's go to the NFC East, and let's start with the New York Giants. Now, they're the ones that ended up getting Brian Burns, but what's the identity on offense? Good question. Well, I mean, what's their identity on offense when they didn't have a quarterback anyways? I mean, it, it, just because they got rid of Saquon Barkley, people are killing him for that. I don't necessarily kill him for that decision. He's an aging running back. You don't pay those guys. But you get Brian Burns, they're going to be really good on defense. But offensively, they didn't do a lot. And, you know, Singletary will come in there. He'll be fine. But what they did do, they got a couple offensive linemen. And when you look at, you know, you, it, one of those guys, we had him on the Super Bowl, John Runyon. Started for Green Bay, didn't play as well last year. He told us he was hurt. He's going to be healthy again, back. That adds some toughness to their offensive line, which they needed to do. So, I look, was it a great free agency class? No, but they did enough to help the run game, which I think they needed to do up front. The offensive line's been bad. You had two offensive linemen. I think that'll help them. I gave him a B plus. Brady Quinn thinks they should draft a quarterback up front. Do you think that, too? I don't. It, it, the question becomes this. Signing Drew Locke take you out of that, and it might. Really? Because now you have Daniel Jones with that money. Drew Locke's making $5 million a year. And so does that take you out of that equation? And I think it might. I think they'll, they'll draft another position. All right, Pete Prisco grading teams for what they've done in free agency so far. We are in the NFC East. Let's move on to a team that took a step back this past season, the Philadelphia Eagles. Now they go out and they get Saquon along with some other pieces here. And, and they spent a lot of money, which is surprising to me, particularly in some of the guys they spent it on. But uh, look, Saquon Barkley... They, that goes against the character of the Philadelphia Eagles. They don't usually spend money on running backs, and they did. I would have spent my mo more of my money on the defensive side of the ball. I think they had major issues on defense. Now, they ended up with Bryce Huff, who is a situational pass rusher. I don't know if he can be an every-down player. He doesn't play the run very well. Gave him a nice contract as well. But then the rest of the groups, you know, they brought Gardner Johnson back. You know, the, the safety was there. They let him go, and now he's back. And you paid him, you know, three years, $33 million. That's a lot of money for a guy you got rid of once upon a time. So I think they got a little bit desperate. But still, you add good football players. Barkley's a good player player. I just think I would have gone in a different direction, but I gave him a B- minus for that reason. That legal tampering period began on Monday, and that's really when free agency begins yeah, in earnest. That All legal these tampering happen. period began about six weeks ago. Uh, true. They're cheating. The, the agreements to contracts really began on yeah. Monday, and then they started filtering out, but you don't tell the Dallas Cowboys that. Mm -hmm. They have done next to nothing. In fact, only one move so far in free agency, and that was signing a long snapper. Yeah, well, you got to have a good long snapper. You know how much I care about special teams. I gave him an incomplete because it's hard. You know why? Give him an eye. It's hard to evaluate them. I'm not one who believes you necessarily have to go out and spend money in free agency at the start of it. You know, if you go back and look at some of the top free agents from the last couple of years, they fizzled out quickly. And it hasn't always given you a bang for your buck. And, and I think Stephen Jones of the Cowboys said it best. You're paying great money for good players in a lot of situations, and that's where you get into some problems. So I think why we criticize them is they said they were all in. Mm -hmm. And if you're all in, you're not spending any money. I think Tyron Smith might go back there. They might end up getting him. But right now, it's an incomplete for the Dallas Cowboys. They've done nothing. Do they need to restructure Dak's contract before they can do any of that I, stuff? Well, they could. But, no, they could still do something else. But, uh, again, why aren't you restructuring that contract, giving them a long-term deal? Uh, there's something at play there. And, and, and it's, not, it's concerning because Mike McCarthy's job is on the line. It really is. He has to win this year, so you would think that you would help him out. All right, let's go to the Washington Commanders. 11 different signings so far, and three of them for over $30 million They've, total. Well, they had a ton of cap room. I mean, when you have a ton of cap room, you're active. And when you're active, uh, you get players. And I thought they actually did a good job. They brought a lot of guys in that Dan Quinn's familiar with. If you look, you know, Darnce Armstrong, Beatich, the center, they were with him in Dallas. And, and so he brought in some guys he's familiar with. But you look at their offensive line, has been a major problem. They add Beatich to play center. They get Nick Allegretti. You know him, the Paisan passion from the Chiefs. He's going to bring some toughness to their offensive line. And then you add some good defensive players. I mentioned Armstrong, Frankie Luvo is a nice signing. And then you got a running back in Eckler. I, I like what they've done in free agency. I, I think when
when you have a lot of money, it makes it a lot easier, a lot of cap room, B+. Plus. It's a good job. It's a good situation. I still can't figure out why Ben Johnson turned that job hmm. down. So two teams that are trying to play catch up here, the Commanders and Giants with the best grades in the NFC East, both of them getting B pluses from Pete Prisco as he grades free agency so far. NFC West now. Starting with the Seattle Seahawks, they, they brought back Leonard Williams, but what else have they done? Not a lot. And again, is that a criticism, though? I mean, uh, we get so caught up in free agency sometimes that it's not necessarily a criticism. Uh, I think the signing of Nick Harris is interesting. It, the center from the Cleveland Browns, he was starting at one point, got hurt, came back, lost his job because they, they liked the guy they brought in there. And so now he might have an opportunity to be the, the starting center. So there were a couple guys. But, yeah, not, not that active, which is why they got a C-minus. Because I, I think Leonard Williams, they had to bring him back after you traded for him. You almost had to bring him back. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the, the class of that division the San Francisco 49ers again coming up just short of a Super Bowl championship still haven't won it since 1994 Steve Young and company they they go out and they they, they sign three defensive linemen what kind of grade would you give them I gave a C plus in large part because they've been a little hamstrung by the by the cap and they're gonna have to you know probably get rid of Armstead um, that's a move that's been rumored out there that Eric Armstead's gonna be let go but I like the deal to get Leonard Floyd I think getting him to go opposite of both that gives them a nice you know, combination in terms of two guys that can rush the pass. So that's their best move uh, is to get Leonard Floyd. And again, I mean, it's a team that's really good. Maybe you don't need to make a, a ton of They needed to get better on defense, though. And one thing that's concerning is they had problems with the run defense. They signed Jordan Elliott. He's a better run player, but I, I don't know how much he'll improve that run defense. All right, not a great grade for the 49ers. No, C plus. C plus. Let's move to the Cardinals moving forward with Kyler Murray at quarterback. And they signed defensive players at each level, front four, middle three, the linebacker, and second. And actually, they got two starting defensive linemen because they, they ended up with Bilal Nichols from the Raiders and Justin Jones. So you have two big guys that they needed to get. You had Sean Murphy Bunton, who they signed from, uh, used to be with Tampa, then played last year with Tennessee, had a good year. And then Mac Wilson, linebacker, who's been around, was in Cleveland, and then went to New England and played well for the Patriots. So you're right, every level, and they needed to do that on defensive side of the ball. They're not great players. They're good players, but they'll make that defense better. So I gave them a B. Moving to the surprise of the NFC West last season, the LA Rams and a resurgence from Matthew Stafford and company, and they went out and they got him a couple guards on that offensive line. And I really liked this move. Well, they, they re-signed Dotson, Kevin Dotson, their own, but they signed Jonah Jackson uh, from the Detroit Lions. Now, Jonah Jackson's really physical in the run game, and what that does now, Steve Avila, who played left guard for them as a rookie, big physical guy, will now move inside the center. So all of a sudden, you have three power players to run the ball in the middle of that offensive line. So that, that made a lot of sense. Then they brought back cornerback Darius Williams. He was with them, went to Jacksonville. Jacksonville let him go for cap reasons. Had a good year last year, and now he's back with the Rams. So solid for the Rams for B. Remember, this is a team a year ago we thought they were in total rebuild. Oh, yeah. They have all those young players playing, and they were right there uh, competing for a playoff spot. Heck of a coach there in L.A. Let's move to the NFC North. The Detroit Lions, the uh, class of that division this past season, almost getting over the hump to the Super Bowl. You gave them a B here, and that's looking ahead, the best grade of anybody in this division had well, they separated themselves. Well, here's why. They had all types of issues in the secondary last year. That was their biggest problem. They addressed it. Carlton Davis, they traded for him. He'll step in, be a starter. Uh, Amik Robertson, who they got from the Raiders, will come in, play nickel, wherever you have to play him. Uh, I, th I think when you look at that on the surface, I think that's the biggest issue. Then you add Davenport, the pass rusher. Marcus Davenport, when he's healthy, and he's been, he wasn't healthy last year, but when he's healthy, he's a big physical guy who can rush the passer. So I like what they did to help improve their defense, uh, which is why I gave them that high grade B. All right, let's move on to a team that, that you think, and a lot of people think, should take that next step this season, maybe be a playoff contender. The Chicago Bears, Justin Fields still on the roster. I know a lot of Bears fans are excited about what they've done so far, but not a great grade here in a C. Why? Well, I mean, when you look at it on the surface, Kevin Byard was let go by the Eagles because he didn't play very well last year. The Eagles are safety needy. Well, now all of a sudden he's in, in Chicago. DeAndre Swift, I think there were better options if you just draft a guy. And what's wrong with the two you had? You had two young backs. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like that move at all. Gerald Everett, I mean, you extra tight end. It's always good to have two of those guys. It's not a big contract. And Jonathan Owens played okay last year uh, in Green Bay, but, you know, two years for him as well. I think the best move they made, the best move 
was Jalen Johnson. Make sure you keep him as your starting cornerback to go with Tyreek Stevenson. You have two great young corners now. I think that was smart, but I didn't love their, their free agency right off the bat. I just think they had better options. And assuming they're going to take Caleb Williams number one, right? Uh, almost definitely going to take And Caleb. Justin Fields, is there any chance he stays on the roster? There's, I think they might keep. Why not keep them until training camp? And if somebody goes, if somebody goes down in training camp and another team, then maybe somebody yeah. gets desperate. And we we know a guy that once traded a first round pick for Sam Bradford. You know that? Remember that guy? Wait, that wasn't Rick. Was yes, it? it was. Oh no. <laughs> yes, it was. In training camp, Teddy Bridgewater went down and he traded a first <laughs> no, round pick for Sam. Geez. But teams get desperate. He yeah. was desperate. All right, let's move on to the the Minnesota Vikings. Speaking of Rick Spielman, our great friend, they lose Kirk Cousins. They sign Sam Darnold. Is he going to be the quarterback there? If they don't go make a move for a quarterback, and, and all indications are going to do everything in their power to try and trade up to get a, a quarterback in the draft. Whether it's, you know, the early talk is they like Drake May. McCown is there now. McCown coached Drake May in high school. Um, so that's a possibility if they can make the move up. I think they ideally like to do that. But I love some of the moves they made. I think when you look at their defense with Flores, he likes chess pieces, and he just signed a bunch of them. Van Ginkle can play a bunch of different positions. Cashman is versatile. The linebacker they signed from the Texans, who had a great year last year. And then you had, you know, Grenard from the Texans yeah, lost well. Hunter, but got Grenard. Yeah, so you replace one with the other, and he's a little bit younger. So I do like some of the moves they made on defense, but any time you lose your quarterback, it kind of drives the grade down a little bit, so I gave him a B-. minus. All right, Aaron Jones, do anything for you at running back? Yeah, he'll be in there. I mean, that's a good, good addition as well. I mean, I think they had a good solid solid free agency class it's just when you lose your quarterback that's yeah. hard to you know it's hard to give them anything more than I gave them which was a B minus speaking of quarterbacks the Packers found out last year they have theirs once again Jordan Love and they also signed top safety Xavier McKinney I like the McKinney move I, I think he's a good player and they needed help there in the worst way um, but you know Josh Jacobs doesn't really do it I mean th that yeah, he's a good back, but did they really need to do that and spend money there? I didn't know necessarily it was, it was that much of a problem with Aaron Jones in terms of trying to get him to take a haircut a little bit. I guess it was. They wanted to keep him when he wouldn't take the cut. They said, nope, we'll go out and we'll get Josh Jacobs. And it's really only a one-year deal for Jacobs, so I don't really have that much of a problem with it. I think McKinney's a good signing for a defense that needed that. So solid free agency class, B-. minus. All right. Nobody uh, has gotten below a C- minus at this point from Pete Prisco. You know why? It's hard, in free, it's hard in free agency. See, You're getting man. soft in your old No, it's really hard in free agency to evaluate these guys. Speaking of free agency, we will keep you up to date with all the news with the new league year beginning today with the CBS Sports app. Scan the QR code to download. All right, free agency is uh, well underway, and here are the up-to-date odds to win next year's Super Bowl. It's the 49ers, the favorites, at 5-1. to one. And then the two-time defending champion Kansas City Chiefs at plus 650, followed by a couple more AFC teams, the Ravens and the Bills. Pete Prisco grading every team and how they've done so far in free agency. We just graded the NFC, the best grades going to a couple teams in the NFC South, the Falcons and the Bucks, both getting A's. Let's start in the AFC West with the defending champion, two-time defending champion Kansas City Chiefs, who look, I mean, you, do you need to do that much other than just keep the guys that you have? No, you don't, which is why I give them a B, and I thought they had a good free agency. Keep Chris Jones. You make sure he comes back, and he's happy. He got a big contract. That's always important. Drew Tranquil, who played really well in the postseason, uh, is now going to be a starter, and, and you brought him back. You also have Legereus Sneed, who is tagged, but they're trying to trade him. If they trade him, fine, you get assets for him. If you don't, then you bring him back and he plays on the tag. So the best part about their free agency is they kept their own. And Patrick Mahomes restructured his contract to enable a lot of that to happen, which is smart for the team. It's smart for him. He gets some money up front. Chiefs know what they're doing. Uh, they're going to be the favorite to win it again. Three-peat, three-peat, three-peat. And we're wondering when the rest of the division will start to to maybe not catch up to them, but challenge them a little bit more. Let's go to the Vegas Raiders. They got Christian Wilkins. They also got your guy, Gardner Minshew. I mean, I, I just don't understand that. You uh, think he's going to start all season? I think he's going to have a competition to start, but they paid him. I mean, he, he got $25 million for, for uh, two years. That's being paid like a guy mm -hmm. who's going to start. Uh, I just don't understand that. I would have gone a different direction um, if I was looking for a quarterback. 
But I did like a couple that, you know, getting Christian Wilkins is big. Now, you know what that does? Max Crosby gets doubled as much as anybody in the league. And now if you play him next to Wilkins, now that becomes a problem if you have to double him. So I think that was a good signing for them uh, defensive-wise. I think bringing back Andre James was big, their starting center. Uh, and he got a good deal from them. So it wasn't awful. I just didn't love the Minshew move. So I gave B minus. All right, let's move to the LA Chargers and Jim Harbaugh taking over there and hasn't done anything really yet. No, they brought back Gilman the safety in and signed Gus Edwards who, you know, is going to be one of their backs in there probably in a group of backs when they draft some, but they're they're limited by what they can do by the cap. They got to clear up cap room. They're still trying to. You know, Mike Williams gone, but uh, you know, they restructured Mac and they're going to have to do some other things as well. They, so very limited what they can do. So I gave him a C minus in large part, if you can't do anything, there's a problem. There's a reason. And the, the previous regime, Tom Telesco, is the guy who did that. And now they have issues with the cap. C- minus has been the lowest grade so far from Pete Prisco as we move to the last team in that division, the Denver Broncos. They... They got Russ out of there, but they're still. So paying. you get, you get. By the way, you get a, a grade goes up for getting Russ out of there. The problem is you still have to pay him a boatload of money. I mean, <laughs> you're paying him over thirty something million dollars to let him walk out the door, which is never easy to do. But you know, they didn't do a lot either. But bringing Malcolm Roach in is a good player from the Saints. Most people don't know who he is good young player who's going to help their run game. And then Brandon Jones, you know, when he played for Miami before he got dinged up, he was a good safety. And you replace Justin Simmons, you bring him in. Uh, I like those two moves. But again, not a lot of great moves in large part because they have some cap issues because of that contract. So C minus. Well, let's go to the team that Russell Wilson is now a part of, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They get him basically for free. They also got, and maybe a more impactful move, they got Patrick Queen away from a division rival. And that was a problem for them last year. All year long, they brought in a bunch of different linebackers. They brought Miles Jack out of retirement at one point, and he was starting. It just wasn't a good situation for them. So I, I do like that move. I'm not one of those guys that's going to praise the move of uh, of Russell Wilson. I didn't like that one at all. So I don't. I gave him a B minus. I understand why they brought in Russell Wilson to compete. I don't necessarily think he's going to be handed the job, but to compete for the job. Uh, so I gave him a B minus. Who would you say comes out of there with that job? It's a toss-up. Pickett can beat him out. That's, that's how bad Russell Wilson's been the last couple of years. Okay. Well, I mean, they're not really paying him much of anything. Right. So I, I, there's no risk. I, I understand it, mm -hmm. but I just, I don't, I don't think he's a great locker room guy either. So. All right. B-minus for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now to the Ravens, who had the best record in the AFC last season, had home field advantage. They go out, they... They, they get Derrick Henry to put in the backfield with Lamar Jackson, and they bring back Matabike. Yeah, bringing back Matabike is the great move. I mean, you have to keep him there. He's a big physical guy, and he's a big reason why their defense was as good as it was. That's their number one move. People will get enamored because of Derrick Henry, name, you know, I don't necessarily think it's a great move. You know, it, that's not what defines this team. And, and you could say, well, he's going to run the ball better. They were the number one run team in the league last year. But couldn't they be even better? They were the, you can be better than one. Well, you can have more yards per yeah, game. I, the problem is when they need to throw it, will they throw it and can they throw it in the postseason well? Because that was the problem in the playoffs. They, they, got, they didn't run the ball in the postseason. Don't get me wrong. I think the play calling was bad. But this, the, the Derrick Henry move isn't going to change their outcome. They have to be better throwing the football. Need to get another receiver, which I think they'll do in the draft. But I, I, I didn't love their free agency. I gave them a B-. Lamar Jackson coming off his second MVP award. They were able to pull away in that division. Uh, thanks in part to the Joe Burrow injury and the Cincinnati Bengals, who they, they got T. Higgins on uh, right now. But it, look, the, he wants out. I mean, is that, is that much of a problem for Cincinnati? Well, he wants out, but it's not his decision to get out. <laughs> I mean, they could say, okay, well, you're going to play for the tag or you're not going to play if he doesn't like the deal they're offering him. So I understand. He, he just is probably frustrated because Jamar Chase is going to get the big deal, and he should. He's the better receiver. But T. Higgins is franchise tagged. I think ultimately he'll realize that not better out there. And, you know, teams – you're going to have to trade a first-round pick to go get T. Higgins and then pay him. That's always risky. We see that all the time. So I think he comes back. I did like Geno Stone, who they took from the Ravens. Good player. Adds some nice uh, depth at safety and a guy who can go in there and do a lot of different things. And then, you know, you basically get rid of Joe Mixon and bring Zach Moss in cheaper. 
Yeah, that's what that is. So I, I, I didn't mind their free agency, but it was nothing that would wow me. So I gave him a C plus. All right. And, and how about the Browns, who had four or five different quarterbacks last season, still won double-digit games to get to the postseason, but what have they done to improve? By the way, that was one of the great coaching jobs you'll see by them getting to the postseason with, with fourth quarterback and down the two tackles and Nick Chubb out That's why he was well. coach of the year. Yeah, they haven't done a lot. Um, you know, they, they also are limited by their quarterback's cap number and his money. Uh, but, you know, bringing Jameis Winston in to be a backup, that means that Joe Flacco's not coming back. So I, I, I get it. Because if you have Joe Flacco in that building, do the fans, will the fans want him to play every time Deshaun Watson has a big, bad game? You would say yes. So I, I understand that. The rest of their free agency, you know, Hicks is a good, solid player. I think bringing back... Uh, Zadarius Smith was big, but trading for Judy. This might be a chance to resurrect Judy. And, and you know, he, he was frustrated. The body language on tape when he played for, with Russell Wilson was so bad. He'd be jumping around, complaining. Well, now he goes to Cleveland. Maybe it's new life for him. So uh, I didn't love their free agency. I gave him a C. Okay, let's move to the AFC South and the Houston Texans with C.J. Stroud in the breakout season last year. So many great young players on both sides of the ball. They trade for Joe Mixon. And they signed Daniil Hunter in free agency. And, and a bunch of other guys that can play. Danico Autry will help their defense a great deal. Al Shahir, the linebacker who, you know, they had in, in San Francisco when D'Amico Lyons was there, comes from Tennessee, uh, adds him some nice juice at that level as well. So, and Jeff Akuda, who hasn't lived up to the expectations, but it was it has capability of being a solid starting corner. You had guys at every level, and they needed to. It, this is all about getting better on defense because offensively, bringing back. Schultz was big for them. You get Tank Dell back. They're going to score points. This team is moving in the right direction. I love what they're doing. I give them an A. That's just the third team, I believe, that you've given an A to. The only others were the Falcons and the Bucks. Let's go to a team that seems to be in rebuild mode, the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry's gone. They replaced him with Tony Pollard. Yeah, and I didn't like that move, which is why I kind of ding them a little bit in terms of their grade. It probably would have been better if it wasn't for just going out and spending money on Pollard. I, I don't think I would have done that. I love the move to get Cushenberry in the middle of their offensive line. He's a good center, and they had major problems at center last year. Uh, Chidobe Awuzie is a good corner. Who's coming. Remember, he came back from an injury, played last year, wasn't quite all the way back, but still played. I think he'll be good for them as a starting corner. Kenneth Murray's a, a thumper in the run game. Uh, so I do think that they added some good players. I just didn't like the Pollard move, which is why I gave him a B. Will Levis, year two, maybe a more uh, playing time, stay healthy. It, it's same thing over in Indianapolis with the Colts in Richardson. They, the biggest deal that they made in the offseason, at least in free agency, was bringing back Michael Pittman. And I know you, you, you didn't feel like he was, uh, he was in line to get that kind of money. Well, I understand it, though. And, and I don't have a problem with it because you needed to keep him around to have a young quarterback. You want to have a number one or at least their number one wide receiver. You think receiver. he's more of a number two? I think two, he's yeah. more of a number two or one B or something. But uh, I get it. I understand it. But they made some other good. Like bringing back Grover Stewart was is probably one of the most unsung moves. He When he's on the field, he's a force. And remember, he was suspended last year for uh, performance enhancing, I think it was. But uh, he's, he's one of those guys in the middle of their line that gives them some thumping in there. It's hard to run on him. Uh, and then they bring in Raquan Davis, who's another big guy from uh, from Miami. So I think they got better in some spots. I just I didn't love uh, a lot of the moves. I would have helped the quarterback a little bit more if it was me. Now to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they, they tagged Josh Allen. They brought in Gabe Davis. Jury's still out on Calvin Ridley. Yeah, if, if Ridley gets added to this class, it probably goes from the grade I gave him a B minus. If Ridley's in the class, it probably goes to a B plus. Uh, I like what they did. Ronald Darby, two years, he's going to start a corner, and he had a good year last year. Uh, Savage was a strange one for me. Good player, solid player, but I thought they would play Antonio Johnson there. He's now going to play the nickel. And then Gabe Davis and Mitch Morse. Mitch Morse automatically makes them better on offense. The center last year was terrible, Luke Fortner. And Gabe Davis, if you get Ridley back, you have Ridley, Gabe Davis, Kirk, and Ingram to throw the ball to. That's a good quartet of receivers. So I like what they did. I gave them a, a B minus, but if, they, if Ridley comes back, that goes to a B plus. All right, let's move to the AFC South and uh, a team that lost Gabe Davis to the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Buffalo Bills. Many starting to believe that window is closing. I don't buy that. On Buffalo, you I don't, don't buy that. No, as long as Josh Allen's there, the window's open. Okay, well, it's, it's open, but they're not taking advantage of it so far, at least as it pertains to your grade with a C so 
far. Yeah, this is another team that had cap issues. And when you have cap issues, the ideal scenario is to try and keep as many guys as you can. They extended Deion Dawkins, smart move. They brought A.J. Epinesa back, by the way. You know him well. He played well last year for them. They brought Daquan Jones back. Played well when he was in the lineup. He got hurt last year. So keeping your own is important. They had to get rid of some good players, which is why you get dinged a little bit because of the cap situation. But I gave them a C. In the AFC East here with the Buffalo Bills who came back to win that division, the New England Patriots, uh, first offseason without Bill Belichick, a, a lot of signings, 11 of them, but will they amount to anything? Well, they had a lot of cap room, and they had to fill a lot of spots. I mean, that's, that's never a good thing, so that means you're going to spend the money. Uh, when you look at some of the guys, like, does Austin Hooper excite you? Probably not. Does Taki Taki, the linebacker, excite you? Probably not. Uh, but I think some of the moves they made in-house you know, bringing Michael Onwenu back, the, the guard tackle, that was important. That's a good move. Josh Uche on a one-year deal, uh, that's good because he's obviously one of those guys that's going to try and play to get a bigger deal after that, and he has some pass rush ability. And then they tagged uh, Kyle Duggar. So I think when you look at it, it was a good, solid class, but not, not great. But they didn't go out and add any big splash guys. And you, sometimes when you give these grades, you want to look for a splash guy. So I gave him a C. Dolphins have been a team that have added some splash guys over the years, like the, the, the trade for Tyreek Hill. But this season, I mean, really the biggest move is a, is a move that they lost in Christian Wilkins. Well, they lost a lot of guys. They lost Wilkins. They lost Van Ginkle. I mean, they, they, they lost a ton of guys. And the right guard, Robert Hunt. I mean, they lost. They, they, this is a team that went and got a bunch of players like Ramsey and Hill, and they're in cap hell. And you also have to pay your quarterback. And so when you do that, you got to start getting rid of, you know, players. And they tried to piecemeal it together and replace them, like Shaq Barrett on a one-year deal, Jordan Poyer, the veteran safety, on a one-year deal, Jordan Brooks, three years, 26 minutes, that's a, but he's going to come in and start at linebacker, and that's important. So I think for where they were and what happened, they kind of replaced some guys, but when you suffer major losses like that, your, your grade's not going to be very good. I gave him a C-. Nobody so far in the AFC East with a grade above a C as we go to the Jets, the last team here to grade, Pete. Yeah, and they didn't get a C grade either. They got a C minus. Uh, again, do you get excited about John Simpson? It'll make him better up front, I think. They did trade for Morgan Moses, you know, today, which gives him a right tackle. So their offensive line got better. Uh, Kinlaw, been a disappointment, but I don't think they needed that. So they really didn't do a lot in terms of. Uh, making their team that much better, which is why I gave a C minus. Was that the division that did the least, the AFC? Yeah, they weren't very active. Well, there's a lot of teams like Miami and Buffalo both have cash issues. I mean, not cap issues, and that's always a problem for activity. Nobody got worse than a C minus from Pete Prisco, but a few of those in the. Well, the Cowboys would have if uh, I didn't give them an incomplete. Incomplete. Yeah, yeah. If you if you see the article online. Uh, whoever wrote, I, I, I think it was Garrett Polder that wrote the article. He gave them an F so far, but, but you're giving them some space I, I to make some I don't moves necessarily there. think free agency is the great end-all, be-all that everybody else thinks it is. Well, got the draft season coming up as well. At the When's end that start? Next month. Well, right now, baby. You got it. We're into it. That's Pete Prisco grading every single team and what they've done so far in free agency. Pick 6 podcast. You can hear guys like Pete, Brady Quinn, and others join Will Brinson and Katie Mox. For the Pick 6 Podcast, it's NFL all the time, all year round.